Hello students, this is our third lecture and we shall discuss about solar energy. This lecture has five parts. The topics we shall discuss in this lecture are as follows. First, we shall discuss about a brief history of solar energy. Then we shall discuss about photoelectric effect and types of solar cells, silicon based solar cells, multi-junction solar cells, thin film solar cells, organic solar cells, and applications of solar energy in diverse forms. In this part, we shall discuss in brief the history of solar energy and photoelectric effect and a brief introduction about different types of solar cells. In the subsequent parts of this lecture, we shall see the other topics one by one in detail. The sun is the sole source of energy to our planet Earth. Solar energy provides both heat and light. It takes approximately 8 minutes for the energy from the sun to reach to the Earth. Human beings have been harvesting the solar energy in many different ways since the beginning of the civilization. The evidences show that the early realization of solar power was witnessed as early as in 7th century BC with burning of ants using a magnifying glass lens. The glass lens concentrates sun's rays to make fire to burn the ants. The second example is of burning mirror reflecting solar rays to set the enemy ships on fire. This had been so overrated in Greek literatures quoting Archimedes and dating back to 2nd century BC and made to remain popular for centuries after. But in the modern times and even with modern technologies and larger mirrors, it has been demonstrated that the sun rays focused by this mechanism is not enough to burn ships standing at a reasonable distance and thus affirming that such stories are myth. However, use of burning mirrors to light torches for religious purposes and cooking food by the people from diverse civilizations namely Indus, Chinese, Egypt and Greece had been popular. Next in the list is solar architecture. We have seen this in our first lecture. Here we revisit a few points. The architecture of the houses are built according to the altitude of the sun on the sky. The houses in the cold climate regions are erected with its doors and windows facing southwards so as to receive more amounts of solar rays for longer duration of time to keep the interiors warm. We shall see some more recent updates on this topic in this last part of this lecture. Now we shall take a look into great bath people used in ancient times for multiple purpose. The earliest great bath has been the great bath of Mohenjo-daro built during 3rd century BC, long before Roman baths were built at many places in Europe. This bath measured 11.88 meters in length, 7 meters in width and 2.43 meters in depth and its floor as well as the side walls water tighted with finely fitted fire bricks and a thick layer of bitumen or waterproof tar. The bath usually had a series of rooms located along the eastern edge with one of the rooms having a well to supply water to the tank. During 1st to 4th century AD, there were built several baths with large south facing windows to let in the sun's warmth to the interiors. An example is shown here in the pictures. 
The windows were used to be covered with transparent stone such as mica, which is a natural substance like glass or clear glass. The clear glass was invented in 1st century AD itself by the Roman civilization people. The glass is efficient in trapping solar heat and keeping the interiors quite warm. Later, the Greeks also adopted the design over their earlier uncovered windows. This became more common in the 2nd century AD when glass and other transparent materials were employed to cover the windows and trap solar energy. By the 6th century AD, sunrooms became more common in the houses and public buildings. Cliff palaces or cliff dwellings were chosen in view of shelter as well as to receive solar daylight and warmth. Such unique places in the mountains were selected by the ancient people and found all where in the world. As we can see in the picture here, the huge monstrous rock providing shade from the scorching afternoon sun and the cavity inside which is receiving the warmth and light for a longer length of time during the sunset or evening. Here at Kate Seal, a 12th century AD ancestral Pueblo village, Navajo National Monument is it was built in a cliff cave facing southeast. The overhanging cliff allows the sun to strike the buildings in the winters but shades them in the summer. Particular slopes in the mountains or the hilly areas are selected to build houses or dwellings as we can see here in the picture in a part of a centurion city in Greece. Almost every house here on the slope is built in such a way so as to receive the evening rays to reach interiors of the houses to keep it warm. Similarly, igloo in the ice and snow covered areas in the Arctic regions and in the cold regions are constructed south facing. Also, the houses in the areas in intermediate latitude such as in South Korea, those are also south facing. An exception is the houses in tropical and subtropical regions, for example in India, where high temperatures are to be avoided. The houses are rather built with east-facing entrances. The topic of sunrooms is included in the lecture as it has been researched very considerately nowadays to help provide comfort to the people at home who usually work in stressful environments. In old days, the homes usually had front stoops, lounges and patios with gardens so as to get enough space and ample environment to relax. But challenges of wind, rain and bugs which could spoil the atmosphere, the sunrooms provide a greater than decent solution. Additionally, the sunrooms in the house architecture provides a source of supplementary heating. Evidences show that the roots of the sunrooms in the housing structure dates back as much as 6000 BC in China, where houses were used to be built with south facing openings to receive solar warmth and light for longer duration during the afternoon and the evening hours. Later on, the Chinese urban planners constructed the streets to run in the east-west direction, giving the housing structures possibly to find a southern view and a source of winter supplementary heating. This tradition is still popular till date. Such traditions are also found to develop in ancient Greece during 500 to 100 BC. Here is examples of sunrooms in 1960s and in 2010. 
The basic structure remains the same. However, the design is little modified. Greenhouses were first built in Italy during 1st century AD to help prevent the vegetables from frost and biting winter cold, hence ensuring supply of food during the odd winter seasons. The ancient Romans developed this design to help plants mature, grow fruits and vegetables and raise exotic plants from other countries or warmer climates. The ancient designs of greenhouses used oil translucent cloth seeds called spicula which were used in addition to mica for the roof covering. The greenhouses using spicula were called as spicularians. In many of these early greenhouses were made facilities of fire to keep the outside stone walls heated which in in turn, heat the air inside. Such arrangements made possible to grow plants and vegetables out of the season. Not only this, people used to store cucumbers during the winters with the holes in the ground and covering them with translucent stones, namely mica or selenite crystals. Selenite is a colorless and glassy variety of gypsum and very useful in trapping solar heat. In the later times, the designs were immensely improved and during 13th to 14th century AD, true greenhouses were built in Italy and were named as botanical gardens. These were largely developed to store exotic and tropical plants collected from other parts of the world for medicinal research. These modern greenhouses were built with glass roofings and were more efficient in capturing enough sunlight and warmth. The two early glass houses were built at Vatican and Salinero. By the year 1450 AD, building of greenhouses became popular and occurred all around the world. In Korea, there appeared a very uniquely designed greenhouses with underfloor heating system called ondol. The working of ondols have been discussed in the first lecture. Ondols help in maintaining the heat and moisture inside the greenhouses. Additionally, the cob walls helped in insulating the heat. The roofings and windows were used to be covered with semi-translucent oiled handmade papers called hanji. The making of Hanji papers have already been discussed in the first lecture. Greenhouses specific for orange trees and other delicate plants in cold climates are called orangeries. Oranges and other citrus fruits are native to Asian regions and migrated to Europe to find a specifically designed orangeries to survive and grow despite of cold temperatures. First orangery was constructed in Padua, Italy. The insides were frequently heated using open fires and the roofings were used to be covered by planks and stackings. In the beginning years in 16th century AD in Italy and in 17th century AD in England, orangeries were built only by the horticulturist but Soon after 1648, it became very fashionable in other neighboring countries, namely Germany, France, and the Netherlands. And soon, the merchants began importing other tropical plants such as banana, pomegranates, and other varieties of citruses. Orangeries were essentially built with south-facing architecture to receive ample sunlight and heat. A very useful and major utilization of solar energy is the direct evaporation of seawater to obtain salt, which is an essential and a must-have ingredient in every household kitchen.
Another popular utilization of solar energy is drying of fruits and vegetables in the sun for storage. It is unknown since when the humans began this practice, but it remains in practical usage until today and source of income to many. In the 18th century AD, Saucher's hot box or the first solar cooker was invented that could be used for cooking. It consists of two wooden boxes with outer large and the inner small one, an insulation cork in between. The interior walls of this small box is painted black and the top is covered by three separate sheets of glass with air spaces between the layers. When the top of the box is exposed to the sun by adjusting the glass layers perpendicular to the sunlight, the temperature inside the small box reaches above 100 degrees Celsius. This is possible to achieve even when the temperature outside the box is about 5 to 10 degrees Celsius. However, this product did not become popular because the box was too slow to heat up. French scientist Alexander Edmund Becquerel discovered the photoelectric effect. While carrying out his experiments with an electrolytic cell made of two platinum metal electrodes placed in an electricity conducting solution as shown in the picture. He observed that the electricity generation increased upon exposure to the sunlight, hence evolved the definition of photovoltaic effect, that is, creation of a voltage or a corresponding electric current in a material upon exposure to the solar radiation, which is electromagnetic radiation. Photoelectric effect is different from photovoltaic effect. In the former case, electrons are ejected from the material surface upon exposure to the radiation of sufficient energy. The generated electrons are transferred from the one material to the another material resulting in built up of a voltage difference between the two. The photovoltaic effect finds most of its applications utilizing the solar radiation converting it into electrical energy and known as solar cells. Photovoltaic effect was further explored with selenium wires and wafer thin seats. In the pioneer experiment, Adams and Day constructed a setup including a vitreous selenium bar connected to platinum electrode and the entire setup encased in a glass tube. The experimental setup is shown in the picture. They reported an increase in electric current when the setup was exposed to the solar radiation. The picture below displays the selenium bar photovoltaic cells constructed by Willoughby Smith. In the year 1883, the first thin film selenium photovoltaic cell was tested by C. E. Fritz. The experimental setup was constructed of a brass metal substrate with a 25 micron selenium metal wafer embedded on its top surface and a gold leaf pressed on the top of this selenium. The electric current was observed to flow in the external circuit when the setup was exposed to the solar radiation. This design in the form of array was first tested on a rooftop of New York City 
by Charles Fritz in 1884. Selenium wafer photovoltaic cell was first to be tested for commercial applications. However, in later years, silicon solar cells became more popular. Photovoltaic effect is emission of electrons or the free carriers when solar radiation is made incident to a specific material such as semiconductor material. The electrons emitted in this manner is called photoelectrons. The photons from the sunlight have characteristic energy which is also known as photon energy and is proportional to the frequency of the light. The photon energy required for ejecting the electron out of the material surface is called work function. As you can see here in this picture, the work function of potassium is 2.0 electron volt. When the photons of energy greater than the work function is made incident, the electron is ejected out of the metal surface and gains some kinetic energy to move in the external circuit. The phenomenon was reported by Albert Einstein in 1905 and it won him prestigious Nobel Prize in 1921 for explaining the theory behind photoelectric effect. In 1932, photovoltaic effect in cadmium sulfide was discovered and between the years from 1905 to until now, this topic remains in the heart of solar power and we shall see in the subsequent part of this lecture the different developments and updates in this field. The photovoltaic and or the photoelectric effect can be designed in the form of solar cells or photovoltaic cells that can produce electricity directly when exposed to the solar radiation and can be utilized in different applications. NASA began to use solar cells right from the very beginning. It launched Explorer 6 in 1959 and the spacecraft had four solar cell arrays which folded out once in the orbit. This provided power for months to the spacecraft. In the year 1964, NASA launched the first Nimbus spacecraft carrying a satellite powered by 470-watt photovoltaic array. The following year, in 1965, the idea of satellite solar-powered station was developed. And in the very next year, NASA launched the first orbiting astronomical observatory powered by a 1 kilowatt photovoltaic array. This satellite provides astronomical data in the ultraviolet and X-ray wavelengths filtered out by Earth's atmosphere. The solar cell can be arranged into solar module or solar panels for production of electricity at commercial scale. The solar array has many additional components fitted with cabling, battery, mounting, and tracking system to construct a complete module to capture most of the irradiation incident upon it and produce electricity. Depending upon the complexity of the design and evolution of newer materials, solar cells have been categorized in three generations. The first generation include single crystalline and multi-crystalline silicon solar cells. This is largely wafer-based solar cell system. The second generation of solar cells include thin film technology and includes amorphous silicon, cadmium telluride, copper indium selenide, copper indium gallium diselenide solar cells. The third generation photovoltaic system include concentrating solar photovoltaic, 
डाइसेंटिसाइज्ड फोटोवोल्टेक्स पॉलीमर एंड अदर ऑर्गेनिक फोटोवोल्टेक्स इन द रीसेंट इयर्स क्वांटम डॉट फोटोवोल्टेक सेल्स एंड प्रोक्साइड सोलर सेल्स आर बीइंग एक्सटेंसिवली रिसर्चड मोस्ट ऑफ द थर्ड जनरेशन सोलर सेल्स आर अंडर डिमॉन्स्ट्रेशन एंड स्टिल नॉट कमर्शियलाइज्ड वी शैल सी दिस इन डिटेल इन द अदर पार्ट्स ऑफ दिस लेक्चर Here in this picture is shown comparison of efficiencies between the different types of solar cells. We shall see this in detail in the another part of this lecture. The multi-junction solar cells here show the highest efficiency up to 41.6%, followed by crystalline solar cells, th then thin film solar cells. and the emerging photovoltaic solar cells based on disensticide solar cells organic cells and perovskite solar cells are still under extensive research the first parabolic solar collector was installed in 1912 at the nile river 15 miles south of cairo city in egypt by a philadelphia inventor and entrepreneur frank schumann each collector was 204 ft in length and 13 ft in width and fitted with a mechanical tracker which could tilt the contractor panels accordingly and appropriately to absorb the solar radiations the heat collected by these reflectors was used to produce steam and power to large water pumps altogether it produced the equivalent to 55 horsepower of energy capable of pumping 6000 gallons of water per minute this was helpful in bringing irrigation waters from nile to the vast areas of arid desert land In the year 1969 a solar furnace was constructed in Odilo France It featured an 8 story parabolic mirror The working principle is shown here It is the world's largest solar furnace It is 54 meters high and 48 meters wide and consists of 63 heliostats or adjustable mirrors producing power of 1 megawatt the site was chosen on the basis of the availability of quality sunshine direct light and purity of the atmosphere the assembly consisted of 9600 reflecting mirrors capable of concentrating the energy equivalent to 10000 suns and produce a peak power of 3200 kilowatt Temperatures above 3500 degree Celsius can be possible to achieve in a few seconds. And the site is serving for scientific research on materials at very high temperature. Here is the picture of the actual site, the solar furnace of Odilo in Font Romeu, Odilo Via. France Since its advent solar energy and solar power technologies are under constant research and evolution Here we define two more categories namely active and passive solar technologies depending upon how they capture and distribute solar energy or convert it into solar power or commercial applications the active solar power technology include photovoltaic system concentrated solar power installations and solar water heating the passive solar power technology includes orienting a building to the sun selecting appropriate materials with favorable thermal mass or light dispersing properties and designing spaces that naturally circulate air
Here is an example of direct or active solar power modules. We can see photovoltaic and concentrated solar power technology. Here is another picture of concentrated solar power where mirrors surrounding a central tower with molten salt chamber at the top of the tower. The mirrors concentrate solar radiations to heat the molten salt. The heat energy stored in the molten salt can be utilized to produce steam and power generation. This is an image from an old newspaper advertisement illustrating direct solar heating technology installed on a building. The solar panel kept at the sun facing side of the roof has pipes circulating water. This water is heated by the solar collector and circulated to the different utility activities in the house. This is a good source of heating water inside the house without using fire that does not involve any cost and no inconvenience at all. In the passive solar power technology, housing materials are designed in such a way so that the interior of the house can be made air conditioned according to the season utilizing solar power. We shall see this in detail in the last part of this lecture. Another picture here is of passive solar water heating technology installed at a rooftop. The picture shown here is more explanatory. In the passive solar water heating, the water accumulated in the tank is circulated through a solar collector and heated directly. In another picture, the design is supplemented with a photovoltaic cell along with a controller. This arrangement is an active solar water heating system. We shall now continue to the next part of this lecture.